Hello and welcome back to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany and we're going to jump right in and I'm going to show you the process for how I created my mermaid for mermaid. When I'm working on original characters, I tend to like my dolls to develop organically. So I don't usually do a concept art per se. I do more of a mood board where I start picking out colors and inspiration pieces and things like that. And then just let the doll form and see how it goes. My main idea for this doll actually came from my daughter and she was telling me I should make a mermaid with petals for scales. This made me think along the lines of natural camouflaging so that maybe the tail would be uh, really fluffy and frond like like the uh, sea dragons but still iridescent because she's a mermaid and I wanted to try something where the tail was totally flexible and there would be no sewing involved and I did want her to have fancy hair because she's a mermaid. So enough with this let's jump right in. For my base doll, I've chosen this Vandala de Blooms, and I've never used this base doll before, mainly because of this peg leg that she has. I never know what to do with it, but since I'm going to be doing a mermaid, her leg's got to come off anyway, so I don't have to worry about that. I jump straight into getting her prepped, and I'm using my electric shaver to shave down all of her hair till there's a nice stubble. Then I'm going to plop her down into some boiled water and just let her sit until she gets nice and squishy. Now that the vinyl's been heated, the head can be easily pulled off the body and you're less likely to break the neck peg doing this too. I use my flathead screwdriver to scrape all of the hair stubble out of their holes. I can then use my needle nose pliers to pull it out through the neck hole. Using 100% acetone and cotton balls, I remove all of the factory paint. To prep her for rebooting, I'm first going to give her scalp a coat of paint. And since I decided to do two different colors, I am going to be painting on the pinks and the greens in separate chunks so that I know where to root. This is the first time I've ever done a two-tone reroute like this. Usually if I'm using two different colors of hair, I'm blending them so that they give natural high and low lights. So I was a bit nervous about how this was going to look and the color choices. To reroute her hair, I'm picking up a plug and wrapping it around my finger. Now I'm going to slide this loop onto the needle tool and I'm going to pull the loop tight around the needle. I'm going to plunge this down into the head of the doll, making sure to keep my needle perpendicular to the line of holes. Now I just do this all the way around along the hairline and the part line. The hair and the tool that I'm using are both from the Doll Planet. These colors are Pluto and Metallic Coral. This is their low temp hair and I do find that my reroutes go a lot faster when using this hair. However, I do miss the advantage of being able to use my curling iron. When I get to the part line, I'm going to fully root down one side. Then I'm going to go in with my needle tool and I'm going to plug down into those exact same holes, only this time I'm going to pull the hair in the opposite direction. This is going to form a nice neat part. When I've completely rerouted the hairline and the part line with the dark green, I'm going to begin with the metallic coral and plug in those areas. When the reroute complete, I'm going to apply some liquid fusion glue inside the head and I'm going to swish that around making sure I touch all of those plugs so that I secure them nicely. She's a mermaid, so of course we've got to get rid of those pesky legs. Now how in the world children manage to break these legs off on accident, it's beyond me because I had to do some serious prying to get them off. And all of these parts are going to go down into my doll parts stock box, which is full of legs and arms and heads and torsos and all the little pieces that you can imagine. You know, not psychotic at all. I use my Dremel and a sanding bit to sand away her molded on panties and all of her seam lines and markings. I'll link the sanding bit in the description box below. It's meant for jewelry making, but it works really well on the plastic. You can see how super smooth she is. 
For her scales, I tried out a lot of different combinations of fabrics, glues, and petals. I liked the look of this one the best, but because of the nature of the plastic petals, none of the glues held. They all just pulled up right away. I wound up landing on these instead, and they're made out of silk, and they have really great holding power, so I didn't have to worry about them just falling off. First, I need to get her prepared for her armature. And to do this, I'm going to drill a hole in her crotch. When her crotch hole is big enough, I'm going to thread it with a armature wire and secure it in place. Since I didn't have one wire that was thick enough, I took these four strands and braided them together. I'm just going to slide them into the hole, wrap them around, and secure them on the end. Out of context, I sound totally deranged. I'm going to begin to build up the shape of her tail, but I first want to fill in these holes where her legs used to be. So I'm going to take some batting and I'm just stuffing this in and hot gluing it in place. This is just going to build up that area a bit. Now I'm going to take these inch long strips of batting that I've cut and I'm going to wrap it around until I get it almost as thick as I want her end tail to be. Always go a little bit thinner because you're going to be adding a layer of fabric on top of this and the layer of scaling on top of that. Now I'm going to start adding in the outer fabric. And I've picked a fabric that's the same color as the scales that I'm using, and it's a stretch fabric. And I'm going to start at the top and I'm gonna work my way down in a diagonal. And then when I get to the tip of the tail, I'm going to reverse and come back up it. Now, if I did this again, I would definitely not take my batting all the way to the tip of the wire. Once I added in the, the tail fins, it made it a little bit bulkier than I was originally hoping for. So that's just something to keep in mind. Make sure that you're covering the batting completely with the fabric because we don't want any of that white showing through. And when you get to the top, make sure to end a little bit before where you want your scaling to start because this is going to be a hard edge and we want our scaling to look a little bit more natural. So it's actually going to be attached up above it. I want to thank all of my supporters over on Patreon. I really appreciate you guys cheering me on, especially when I was seriously doubting some of my decisions on this doll. Angel Bookwalter, Angelica, Dollicious, Jennifer Medina, Angela Hendrickson, Camille, Kitsy, Stormcrow Studios, Donna Magana, Bex Mini Studio, OOAK Magpie. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. If you're interested in becoming one of my Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description box below. They get behind the scenes content and photos of the dolls in progress, exclusive video content, some tiers get clothing patterns, and access to some of my 3D printing files. They get to participate in polls, and they even decided the name on this doll. Now for her tail fins. My daughter actually found these and came running over to me to tell me these would be perfect for mermaid fins and I had to agree with her. I wanted them to feel a little bit more magical so I decided to try them out and use them as veining instead of wire for Angelina film mermaid fins. They're a little bit bushy to start out with so I am going to trim some of these down before I use them. I wrap a piece of Angelina film around each section and then using some parchment paper to help protect my flat iron, I'm going to run it across there very quickly. You can't do it too long because it will melt the plastic of the leaf and also make the Angelina film cloudy. I'm using the lowest heat setting on my flat iron. I cut away the excess and give it a general shape, and I have one down and a whole lot more to go.
I use my lighter to refine the edges and give them a more organic shape. Make sure you're doing this in a well ventilated area and wearing a respirator mask because you are burning plastic. Be very careful because you are working with something extremely hot and you can see even with the silicone heat guard on my thumb it was still too hot and I uh, nearly burned myself. So be careful. I use my soldering iron to poke little holes into the Angelina film, just giving them an organic shape and using it to help shape out some areas that the lighter couldn't get to very well. Here's a look at that end result and I was very pleased with how it turned out. Now to attach all of those fins. I've made several and I'm also going to be including one of the fronds without the Angelina film on it. So I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to wrap it around the base of this tail and I'm just going to add in all of those pieces and I'm going to secure it further with hot glue. I begin layering on her scaling and I'm making sure to cover up all of those hot glue and wire joints and I'm just going to be layering these on and then staggering them and occasionally I will throw in an off color green one. I'm careful to only apply a thin layer of glue to the back of these and I am using hot glue but if it's too thick it's going to squish out around the sides and we want this to be as clean as possible. I'm going to continue this all the way up to the top edge of the fabric, but I am going to temporarily stop right there until I am able to do the body blushing. Now onto the face up. Here are all the colors that I used over the course of this doll, and I used a lot of the Jane Davenport pastels because this was the perfect shades of green to match her. I've given her two coats of Mr. Super Clear, waiting 30 minutes between each layer, and then I can get started on the face up. The first thing I tackle is sketching in her eye shape, and once I'm happy with the shape, I can match up the other eye. With her overall eye shape done, I began to sketch in her iris and pupil placement because I was unsure if I'd made these too narrow or not. Using a couple of different colors, I began to give some definition to the waterline. I began contouring and shading her face using my Jane Davenport pastel set. I don't often use this set because they're not as highly pigmented as my pan pastels, but they did happen to be in the exact right color that I needed, and since I wasn't doing a full color change, I didn't need the vibrancy that the pan pastels offer. But because they aren't as pigmented, they do require a little bit more building up. I use a watercolor pencil to begin sketching in a rough shape for her eyebrows. I raise one of her eyebrows and give her a bit of a smirk because I want her to have that knowing look that she could put you in your place if she wants to. I give her a light blushing of peachy tone around her face, making sure that I'm hitting the apples of her cheeks and her forehead. I also apply this to her lips and lightly to the eyelids. I use my white pastel as a highlighter and start dusting it onto some of the raised parts of her face. I find watching beauty tutorials a really good way to start and know how to highlight and contour a doll's face because it's very similar to makeup. I give her another spray with Mr. Super Clear to seal in this work and I start on layer two. I'm going to first sketch in her eyelid crease and then begin blocking in the colors to her iris. I begin building up the color of her eyeshadow to increase its intensity. I 
fill in her scleras with a white watercolor pencil. I'm using the Caran d'Ache Super Color and this is the brightest white I've ever had in a watercolor pencil. It's very creamy and the color comes out very opaque just right off the bat. If you're someone who's just starting out, I would suggest the one thing you don't skimp on is your sealant and your pencils. You can get away with using cheaper pastels as long as you're not trying to do a full body color change, but a good quality pencil is going to more easily draw on the vinyl with your sealant than a lower quality pencil. If you're using an artist grade quality, they're going to be very intense and vibrant, and a student or craft grade is still going to be very sheer even on a good sealant layer. If getting a large pack of artist grade stuff is just out of your price range, you can usually buy the pencils individually between two and five dollars a piece. So just getting a couple of the staple pieces would really help you out to get started. Layer two is all wrapped up. So I've sealed her once again and started on layer three. And I'm gonna kick this layer off by giving her some details to her eyes. I sketch in her eyelashes using some quick light flicks. I find that the looser I am with this, the better they look. I wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel. I've just passed the 14K subscriber mark and I'm super excited. I'm thinking about doing a giveaway for 15K. So if you could think of a doll that you might want to see in a giveaway, please leave a comment down below. I shade in her eyes with some Payne's Gray Pastel. This gives the illusion of depth and shading caused by the upper eyelid and the eyelashes. Using white watercolor lifted directly off the pencil, I'm adding in her catch lights and highlights to her waterline. I finish her off with a dusting of mica powder before I seal her for the final time. Now to blush that body. I've wrapped up her tail to protect it and I've given her three coats of Mr. Super Clear and I'm going to get started on the blushing. I'm using the same colors that I used on the face so that I can be sure that they match and I just begin the highlighting and contouring. When I'm satisfied with her blushing, I give her a few final coats of Mr. Super Clear, and then I add in those last remaining scales to the top of the tail. I add in a final touch of shimmery iridescent spray all over to her body so that she has that mermaid sparkle. Instead of a traditional chest covering, I decided I wanted her to have gold leafing. I'm applying gold leafing adhesive into a splotchy pattern so that it looks more natural, I wait for it to turn clear to indicate that it is ready for the application and I lay down the leafing. I've chosen this variegated leafing that is mixtures of copper and green so that it fit in with her color scheme. I lay it down then brush away the excess. Now for some hairstyling, and I'm going to do my best to attempt to explain what I was doing. It's a lot of me just fooling around with the hair. I'm first going to section out this middle portion of hair, and then I'm going to separate out three sections on each side of the temples. Now I'm going to remove the rubber band from the large middle section and I'm going to section it off into a smaller section at the very front. I'm going to take the newly created front section and I'm going to pull the two side sections to group up with it and form it into its own ponytail. I do find that wrapping up the hair that you're not currently working with in a ponytail holder is very helpful with keeping things nice and neat and the hair out of the way. I create a hole in the gathered area and then I push the ponytail up and through it. 
I use my fingers to help pull and fluff the hair. Now I take and segment out another piece from the middle portion of the hair and I'm going to add that to the base of the previous ponytail and add in the two side sections from the temple that are up next in the row. I form those into a ponytail of themselves. Then I create another dividing hole and then flip the ponytail up through this one in the opposite direction of the last one. I take the two remaining temple pieces and wrap them around the base of that ponytail and secure them in place. And since I picture my mermaid girl as an ornamentalist, I begin adding bits and bobs to her hair. She's getting lots of jump rings and chains and just different metal bits to decorate up with. With the jump rings and decorations in place, I'm now going to cut out the majority of the rubber bands. I'm still going to leave a select few, but any of the more visible ones that I have secured with jump rings, I'm now going to cut away. Finally, I finish off the look by adding in a braid. I've taken some of the loose hair and braided it all up, and I'm plugging one end down into her hair, making sure that it's nice and hidden, and then I'm going to weave this through her hair and secure it in place with a pin. Now on to some accessories. The first thing I decided on for her was a barrel type situation where it looks like she's been caught and uh, was dumped into the fish barrel. So I picked this up at Hobby Lobby and I have watered down some acrylic paints and I've mixed up several colors, but I've not thoroughly mixed them. As I start painting, you'll see the streaks of the different colors. So it's giving some variation there. Once the paints had a chance to dry, I'm going to start applying some greenery and moss. I brush on some white PVA glue and then I sprinkle it with some grass blocking. You can usually find this in the miniatures department at the craft store. I 
I glue some bigger chunks of moss and flowers in place with some hot glue. Now she's going to need a lot of jewelry. Like I said, I pictured her more as an ornamentalist, so I'm going to bust out my wire and chain bits and start making some jewelry for her. I wound up making her lots of rings, bracelets, armbands, and draping earrings. At the time this video goes live, Narissa will be available for purchase on my Etsy shop, so if you're interested, please check out the link in the description box below. And with that, she's done. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in and watching this video. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video. Remember, always be creating.